the UK's bold plan to stop Islamists intimidating teachers over blasphemy. The UK government is considering bold measures to protect teachers from accusations of blasphemy and intimidation by religious groups over educational content. A new report commissioned by Lord uh, Walmy, the government's advisor on political violence, urges the Department for Education to issue, issue statutory guidance to schools on managing blasphemy-related incidents. As Jack Rivington of the National Secular Society stated, the Walney's report focus on the threats and intimidation faced by UK schools in relation to blasphemy accusations is welcome, as it recommends as its recommendation for greater protections for teachers. The proposals aim to prevent schools from automatically suspending accused teachers, stop requiring parental consultations on professional potentially offensive material, and shield educators' identities during controversies. The move follows high-profile cases like the Batley Grammar School incident, where a teacher received death threats for showing a cartoon of the Prophet Muhammad. With teachers feeling let down by authorities, the report signals a firm stance against religious intimidation in the classroom and a commitment to upholding freedom of expression. Um... So let's give a background for those who are not aware. So, okay. What happened was in 2021, there was an incident where a teacher at the Batley Grammar School showed Charlie Hebdo cartoons in a lesson on freedom of expression as a principle and value of the United Kingdom, you know, like civics. And this was actually not too long after in France. Samuel Paty was beheaded in the street by a Chechen terrorist for also showing uh, Charlie char or accusations of showing Charlie Hebdo cartoons in a civics lesson. Um, so basically being murdered for promoting the values of the Republic to French children and citizens. So this, what happened at Batley Grammar School was very shortly after a teacher was murdered for this kind of accusation and activity. So, what happened at the Batley Grammar School was this teacher was, so these like Islamists started protesting in front of the school and the teacher was immediately suspended and he, the school had to shut down for several days because the school was worried about violence and threats. And so huge disruption to the learning environment. And this teacher and his family of four had to go into hiding because members of the community identified him to the public and were promoting threats and incitement against him. So his identity became known. The school threw him under the bus. And this teacher and his family lives in hiding to this day. They are still living in hiding. And they, he was not protected by the school in any way whatsoever. Another incident that happened was... Um, it was not too long ago. I think it was 2023. Um, there was an incident at a school where there was an allegation that a Quran was slightly damaged by a student, by a 14-year-old boy. And this 14-year-old boy was autistic, highly autistic. And this boy received mass amounts of death threats against him in his safety and what ended up happening is essentially the mom of this boy who is alleged to have lightly damaged this quran was taken into this event that was held at a local mosque so at an unrelated local religious institution and held a panel where she basically pleaded for mercy in front of the community. So these are, th I'm saying all this to provide some context about the environment that's happening in the United Kingdom. And this has had a major chilling effect on educators in the United Kingdom, where there were polls that have been done where the majority of English teachers say that they would not show this material to students 
and 9% of those teachers specifically cited the incident of the Batley Grammar School as to why they are motivated to not teach this content to British citizens. Right? So this, this has had a deleterious effect upon the teaching of, of, of British but ostensibly liberal values upon their own citizens, right? And so there was a report that we covered a few months ago by the Commission on Counter-Extremism. And that report um, that we talked about talked about how there, the blasphemy extremism in the UK is getting more radicalized. And much of this radicalization and much of this anti-blasphemy activism is explicitly coming from Pakistani influence. Where, you know, the report, because that report, I read the whole thing. There were some instances where they were talking about, like, kind of back in the day, there was, like, some Al-Qaeda influence, you know, like, about 20 years ago. But now the influence is basically being pipelined from Pakistan, where different religious organizations, different cultural institutions are bringing in members or promoters of the TLP party in Pakistan, which for those who are unfamiliar is like the most foaming at the mouth, blasphemy radical party in all of Pakistan that the government itself is freaking afraid of. They had to like, <laughs> there was an incident that happened a few years ago where the TLP and their supporters were marching upon the Capitol and the government literally had to come and use bulldozers to tear up the streets and highways so that they couldn't proceed to march on the Capitol. That actually happened. Um, so this is the party where charities, charities and religious and cultural institutions are bringing in supporters and promoters and speakers, spokesperson from this political party to come and speak at their, their mosques, their centers, whatever, and promote their ideas which are often uh, also, you know, tangentially very anti-Semitic and also very homophobic and also very misogynistic. But that's a side point. So let's go into the present day. There was this report that came out and the report actually ostensibly looks at a wide variety of political extremism that's happening in the United Kingdom. And I was reading it last night. I wasn't, okay. Um, for if anyone's interested, it's called Protecting Our Democracy from Coercion by Lord Walney. Um, it's freely available online. I was I when I when stuff like this comes out, I really try to read the reports. I wasn't able to read this whole thing because it's like 300 pages long, but I was just reading what's um relevant to this story, right? But it's actually so interesting, Armin, because it goes the full gambit of documenting and examining how different extremist groups are using coercion and intimidation tactics upon the rest of society to disrupt their lives and coerce people in, in various ways. So it goes far right to far left. And it didn't dig into Islamism specifically per se in most of this, but Armin, it does a very good job of documenting how far left groups are openly collaborating with explicitly Islamist organizations, including with groups where their leaders have met with and praised Hamas officials. What? So it doesn't dig into a lot of, like, it kind of just goes far left to far right. It doesn't really dig into Islamism within its own category, but it goes deeply into documenting how many of the far left groups also correlate with Islamist groups. Mm. So... This is like not a conspiracy, you guys. This is known and documented by the government. Also, fun fact, when I was reading this report, you will be maybe not surprised, but there, there's, there's a figure who's familiar to our community 
who was mentioned in this report. Could you guess who maybe it is? Jimmy? No. no. They talk about Muhammad Hijab in this report. Oh. Can you send me this report, please? I want to yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe like review it on the Persian channel. Yeah. Um, well, not so, after the show. And I was I was um, reading a bunch of this, and it's so profound and like so interesting. So I mean, I wish we had more time to go into this in depth. Um, but basically, it gives a bunch of recommendations about what the government needs to do to rectify the state of democracy in the United Kingdom. Um, because what is the recommendation? Well, there's a lot. There's a lot among different fronts and pertaining to different groups. So for the purposes of this segment, I'm just going to focus on the the blasphemy radicalism that's intimidating educators and then therefore, you know, chilling the educational environment for all of Britain. Right. Um, So here here are some quotes. Um, So. Again, so this is um, as for context. Wait, wait, before before you read before you read it, can I can I say is this a, could somebody? I'm trying to look in the positive into this, okay? Because I I know a lot of ex-Muslim or anti-Islam channels keep saying the UK has fallen and it's a Sharia takeover and it's all effed and everything. And I don't want to dismiss how bad things are becoming in the UK. I I just don't know if it's a good idea. To just have such a defeatist attitude and think like it's all lost and basic because I feel like that attitude will make people not fight for the UK because they were like, yep, it's all gone. It's all because it's just looks we're screwed, it's all over. And I just feel like hey guys, like you need to have some hope or else nobody's gonna fight to take back your country. Um, so with that, I want to ask. Does this report give you some hope that maybe the government is now taking this seriously and it's not as bad as people say that the government is like ignoring all of this or I don't know. I'm not, I'm just asking. Okay. Basically. So I have two feelings about it. So this report, it's, it's very well done. It, um, Lord Walney, who was commissioned to create this report has incisive, moral clarity expressed in this report where he is very clearly strictly about protecting freedom of expression but then also saying that we cannot allow these fringe activists to derail the entirety of their of our society no matter how morally righteous certain members of the public might think that they are it's unacceptable so he and he articulates this with just such moral clarity in this report and the recommendations which we can get into i think are very very solid so i'm like this is awesome like this there there is an awareness there is a um they're not mincing words there's no um like apologism so to speak mm-hmm. um now the question is it is dependent that this actually becomes implemented that's where the rubber meets the road. That is where the mu- rubber meets the road. On the other hand, in in my uh, in my work at my job, I have the opportunity to sometimes speak to certain academics or people who are involved as government officials. And I was speaking to a certain um, British academic who might be come involved with becoming a uh, a government official in the the lens of you know islamophobia and because they have like a position for islam you know like this whole issue in the united kingdom um and he was legitimately very worried so like speaking to to people who are like on the inside they're like Mm -hmm. oh we have a they they were legit worried and i was like oh Mm -hmm. no so Mm -hmm. okay so um, be afraid so guys i take everything back um be afraid like i was trying to provide some hope um ab- abandon all hope be terrified panic hit the panic button okay so thank <laughs> no. you Su- no thank you Susie. let's continue yeah so like i think no, here's the difference though just because there is cause for concern which there is cause for concern that doesn't mean that all hope is lost yeah yeah i know i think that's an important distinction 
So anyways, um, let's go into some of the actual like meat of this report. So, and here's some quotes. The Wally report also says that schools are quote, not required to engage with or appease local activist groups or religious institutions in managing blasphemy related incidents or other tensions, including around relationships and sex education. Um, in 2023, a copy of the Quran was slightly damaged at a school in Kettlethorpe, leading to a 14-year-old boy receiving death threats. The school responded by suspending the pupils involved in meeting with leaders from a local mosque, a meeting which Walney describes as an exercise in, quote, ritual humiliation. The report said that it was, quote, shameful for all involved that the one of the boy's mothers appeared at this meeting to, quote, plead for mercy in a, quote, intimidating and partisan setting in order to deter public protest. Walden described how this is an described how during these and other blasphemy related incidents, the implicit threat of violence is, quote, exercised as a form of veto over what is taught in UK schools. The, recommend, the report's recommendations echo previous calls made by the National Secular Society for greater protection and support for teachers involved. So what are the specific um, recommendations? One of them is to create like a special unit, like a special task force that are tasked with responding to flashpoint blasphemy related incidences. Um, another one is that schools under no circumstances should immediately suspend teachers who face these accusations. Another one is that teachers should never, ever, ever be identified by name or face to the public. Um, another one is that it is completely inappropriate for um, teachers, officials, local label or lo local counselors, aka <coughs> labor counselors, um, meeting with members of religious communities or local mosques that are completely unrelated to the incident involved. Um, it's, it, it, and it is, it is an inappropriate. It is inappropriate. Why does some random mosque that just happens to be in the same community have any dictate or any relevant opinion about the actual function and policies employed with dealing with these incidents? Um, so, uh, and it also, you know, just talked about how this is becoming increasingly radicalized and we really need, um, to implement really strong recommendations to protect these teachers. Um, so do you have any impressions for all the information I just dumped on you? What, what is, I still don't, because I was looking up this information, what is the general um, suggestion? I didn't see anything hard or solid that like could be, it's just like, let's not allow them to do this or that. Like, can you give it like a, what, are, um, what, are, what, are, what do you think? Let me look at the report and I can actually pull up some stuff. This is, uh, seems like more warning than actually any recommendations that will do anything significant. Yeah. Okay. Um. Wait. No, that was just describing the incident. Um, bah, 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 bah. Sorry. Let me just... Um, Basically, they, they need to be protecting strict, like actually implementing policies, because part of the problem is, is that there are not directives coming from above about how to deal with these incidences. So what what is an actual thing that you could do? Like, I didn't see anything solid here. Like, can you give me like one example of something solid they could do against all of so this? Do not immediately suspend or fire teachers who face these accusations. Do not consult local religious authorities about how to deal with these problems. Do not ask parents for permission about teaching these subjects. Versus, you know, okay. for some forms of sex education, you have to get parental consent. This is one of those instances. No, we do not get religious consent. We Parental consent. Um, like I said, don't identify teachers under any circumstances to the press or local authorities um, and do not collaborate with any outside unreligious religious institutions about how to okay, okay. Uh, okay, yeah. ameliorate. Okay, this is what you should do. Okay. This is what you should do. Okay. Okay. First of all, immediately stop accepting any immigrants from Islamic countries. One. Okay. <laughs> Two. 
Okay, two, right? Two. Increase sig in significantly increase the punishment, like for anybody that intimidates anyone else for their opinions. And I'm talking years in prison. Like anybody that comes and you know tries to enforce blasphemy or threaten or intimidate anybody for saying things against Islam should immediately get uh, arrested and harsh extremely harsh punishments should be uh put be put on put on them like i'm talking like 10 years or something in prison okay i, I know nobody is going to do this but i'm saying this is what should what should happen okay uh we're going to have we're going to have french level secularism oh, uh shit. children will ch not only children will, in school cannot bring bring come up with the hijab or any other religious symbols the education system has to change significantly to teach children critical thinking skills and the teachings against any form of dogma dogma uh, any we we need to criminalize brainwashing children even at their home bringing children to secular secular minded schools will be mandatory any parent who uh, is forcing their religion on their children will be investigated and if continued they will be considered not fit to be a parent and they could risk losing their um, children you know um if they continue like your first will be warning you know, and then everything like that um oh there will be mandatory for children mandatory cultural trainings so that they are brought up with the desired culture uh, and values fit for the country. Um, Anti-Semitic beliefs should be challenged among children. Um, Anti-LGBT views should be challenged among children. Children have to be exposed to children with other cultures and beliefs and exchange, uh, you know, put into teams, put into, you know, cooperate with them. Um, everything, everything basic, all the teachings have in school has to be uh, towards de-radicalization, towards mixing the uh, children with the rest of the community. Um, yeah, and lots of, I, I can keep up thinking, oh, um, anytime any mosque or any other institution, Islamic institution, is even any report of them promoting any radical beliefs or any beliefs that doesn't fit the culture and values of the country will be immediately closed with no plans to ever open it again. All the financial costs of closing the building and all the institution and all their assets would be seized and be given to the government um, in, with any small hint of any reports that they're promoting radicalism or extreme beliefs. So, and I can keep coming up with more, a bigger list, but I will, you know, this is just the beginning. And this is the man that calls himself a libertarian. No, this is a libertarian. This is, this is, nothing I said is in, is, right, contradicts any, any form of libertarianism. If we can, if we could make it mandatory for children to, le to have to le learn mathematics, because I'm a libertarian, but I'm also a secularist, right? Um, this is this not not violate anything when it comes to libertarianism, but again, this is just the beginning. If you um, if you give me more time, I could come up with new rules, more rules. Okay, well, these were recommendations for the Department for Education, so I don't. I, okay, you know, they no, have a limited scope. Across, but no, I know. I just was talking no, about I, the. Report. I have police, education, everything. You know, the the judicial system. And if, yeah, this is what you're supposed to do. And let me be clear. There are other elements of this report that go far beyond like this segment that do talk about those kinds of re recommendations. So, for example, one of them was about expanding the definition of what is considered encouraging terrorism, including people that celebrate terrorism or terrorist groups, because we've seen a lot of that in the United Kingdom. And so they, it talks about like expanding those definitions. Did I send you the report? Like, honestly, Armin, I think it'd be very interesting for you to go through this report on stream. Like literally, if you just do control F Islamist, you will find so much juicy details in this report. Um, 
I, I want to, oh, when I have more time, I want to read it in depth because again, yeah. like just moral clarity. Love to see it. Yeah. It just doesn't go as far as I think it should though. No, Armin, way, like I said, yeah. it, that is on that specific issue. The rest of the report yes, goes yes. a lot further on different issues, including protesters that are encouraging violence, endorsing violence, um, protests like rebellion extinction that disrupt public life, that cost the economy, that damage livelihoods of people. Like one of the recommendations was that people who have their lives disrupted by activists who are say blocking a road that they should be able to seek personal damages against the activists who are preventing them from going to work so like that's a recommendation but that's on a completely different topic you know what i mean so it right. really does actually right. go into depth on a lot of those things okay i see a lot of people in the live chat are saying that armin is not a libertarian based on everything he said or some people saying like you're not a uh, liberal you're a fascist guys being a libertarian or being in favor of low government involvement does not mean that you're a freaking anarchist, okay? You, it doesn't mean that you're in... Uh, I'm a libertarian. I believe in low government intervention, but not zero government intervention. Uh, most people who believe in capitalism or libertarianism also believe that it's completely okay for the government to mandate for children to have to learn math mathematics. If you if the, you're okay with that, if you're okay that children have to be learned, it's mandatory. No parents can opt out out of making their children um, making their children not learn like math, literature, or physics, you know, biology. You cannot choose that as a parent. So the government will force you to teach that to your children, and that's okay. So given that you could do that, then you should also be able to do that when it comes to the values that keep your country together. The cultures and values that everything rests upon. If math is important, this is also important. So we have already set a precedent where we mandate teaching your kids certain things, and this should be included, right? And also everything else that I said is also not anti-liberal. If you make a threat, if you intimidate people, that is already illegal. I am just saying that given we just should increase the punishment. That's already illegal. It should already be illegal. If an institution is promoting violent or extremist ideology, shutting that down is already, we have, in liberal country, we already have precedent for shutting those down. How is that fascistic? How is that fascistic? If an institution is actively promoting ideas that uh, challenges the fabric of society, the government is responsible. It's not a liberal or a libertarian who is against that. It's, a, it's an anarchist who is an, who's against that. The government is responsible for the safety and the security of a citizen. A, a lot of people don't understand libertarianism. They think like, oh, no government intervention. You need government intervention for providing safety and security to your citizens. Anyways. I'm just laughing because like American libertarian is American libertarianism is like so different. And you said about like 50 things that would make an American libertarian like rip their hair out. So I'm just poking fun at you. Um, yeah. Although to be fair, I find many of them to be extremely naive. Um, so although, you know, let me be clear. I, I love me some libertarians because you can say a lot of things about libertarians. Okay. You can say a lot, let's be honest, but you cannot say that you will have a boring conversation with one. I have always had interesting conversations with libertarians. <laughs> They're eclectic and a little weird. Gotta love it. Um, okay. A lot of libertarians don't understand libertarianism, and they have been too much influenced by anarcho-capitalists. All right, yeah. and they think like, "Oh, I hate the government and everything it does." Right? Like even Adam Smith in the book Wealth of Nations, if you read it, there's from the very beginning of defining capitalism there was government had a role in maintaining safety and stability and doing a whole bunch of other things anyways i'm not gonna get on that mm -hmm. topic. but we have so many super chats i know we have a lot of super chats before we can get to the next story and this one is interesting yeah. um so viceroy or as i'm calling him um thank you for the super chat saying in the 80s german democratic republic political prisoners were brought free were bought free same from for the guy in Egypt. But 
but free. Bot That's free. Right. I'm sorry, I don't understand your grammar, so I cannot comment on what you're trying to say. In the 80s, German Democratic Republic political Bot free, like, what? I don't understand. Oh, so in the 80s, German, so there were prisoners in Egypt and people bought them to get by their freedom, I think. That's what he's saying in the 80s. I don't know. I'm assuming. This is what I'm getting. Yeah, but it's not going to be that simple in Sharif Gabbar's situation. Um. Uh -huh. Okay, so Puli, thank you for the super chat saying <laughs> I don't think you, YouTube is gonna like me saying these words. Don't say it, say in est and p p o r n. No, I just spell the whole thing, just spell out the whole no, thing. No, I'm I don't want I'm not I'm so tired of speaking in code. Okay, uh okay. They no 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 wait, then let me read it. Okay, they can't watch in est. P O R N. Um, I don't know even know what you're trying to say though. Yeah, exactly. What is the rest? I think the rest okay, of this is thank like you for the support. Part, or, yeah, exactly. Just yeah. it's just chaos. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for the support. Trying to decipher super chats like we're freaking cryptologists or something. Um, yeah. we're like what the fuck? Um, Bungie gave a super chat. Thank you. Saying just wanted to say how cute Susanna is. Oh. Thank you. She's great. Owns so much on the channel. Well, that's very mm. sweet. Thank you, Bungie. I appreciate that. Um, Master of Darkness. I don't know what this is pertaining to, but he just said, Pakistan. Well, here you go. <laughs> it was, here we go again. This is a good Pakistan and what, you know, people mob justice. Armin is stepping in it again. Um. <laughs> John Bundock, thank you for the super chat. Oh, clarifying his previous one. Um, saying, sorry for the confusion. Egypt needs political, cultural change beyond zero-sum intimidation, vanguardism, and violence. I get why many folks want to get out. Oh, yeah. We have some asylum seekers from Egypt in our community, and the stuff they go through is crazy. I'm so glad they're out of the country. They're so lucky. Um, stop in, we'll animal cruelty gave a super chat saying look at tommy's rally from yesterday can can we cover that next week well i'm because gonna be on vacation became... next week oh yeah you're right maybe yeah okay okay maybe, maybe I'll you could do a stream, stream about it. it yeah yeah it'd be yeah. really interesting um maybe. if anyone has um footage of the speeches that were given at the marcher rally please recommend it to us on our discord channel in the news segment because i've been seen clips but i want to see the full speeches and i think that'd be a great thing for armin to do like in depth on the show um it'd be great if you did like kind of like a review or unpacking of tommy robinson armin because like yeah he's he's a complicated figure um i mean he's he, his positions I, I do have some criticism of him, but his positions are solid. Like I haven't found anything like I used to believe that based on so many things that people said that this guy is like a freaking racist monster. And then when I looked at his, everything he says is completely right. The, I, there are some things here and there that he had done that I'd be like, okay. And he, he also acknowledged that after that those were wrong, but most of it is pretty good. Like I, I, I I think I think Tommy is what UK needs right now, actually, more than anything. He's else. he's also uh, grown a lot as a person. Yes, his, I yes, think you're right. people should take him for what he is now, because he has evolved a lot, and I think that needs to be acknowledged. Um, but I one of the, we were talking about this before the stream, and one of the things that Armin was saying that I agree with is that he sometimes doesn't do good fat fact checking. Um, fact checking that's the problem and, that, and yeah. that's yeah. where he kind of steps into it the most nowadays i think that's his biggest mistake nowadays i'm like you should do more fact checking about certain stories or videos that you like yes. amplify um yeah because that's, his positions are correct he just he just needs to when he gets a video he just needs to double check if it's actually what he thinks it, what it is before posting it that's the only criticism I have. Susie agrees with me on this, right? Just like wait a little bit and make sure the video is actually what you think it is before posting it. Other than that, his positions are solid. Because otherwise, it's just way too easy to discredit you. Right. 
and then by extension paint you as a racist because of the assumptions you made when you were promoting something you know what i mean so um yeah right. Right. um viceroy gave a super chat saying deja vu of the uh, apostate prophet stream where david wood went full pessimist i uh, what did he go pessimist about specifically i'm curious because they do a mm. lot of streams together that could be any stream um so <laughs> kenny reacting to your government recommendations yep that's definitely more bold <laughs> <laughs> um d was saying that blasphemy laws were abolished in england 16 years ago this is absurd yeah i mean there were blasphemy laws on the books in scotland until like within the past four years that were just abolished um those were like not actually acted on though my understanding gaijin american has a creative idea for cultural cohesion thank mm. you for the super chat saying bringing hindu chinese and muslim immigrants at a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio and a reality tv shows like wife swap and force them to coexist <laughs> i would watch that show i would yeah, watch I mean, that he... show I understand what that Europe needs more immigrants. Okay, I know. Okay, but have you? It, are there not enough non-Islamic countries? Bring in from South America, bring in from uh, the Philippines, bring in from the non-Islamic countries in Africa, bring in from bring in from Vietnam, bring from Mexico. Like these are so many countries where you could bring in immigrants that are not going to have the same issue as the people you bring in from Pakistan or what the, what's wrong with you? Like, why? Like you pick the worst country, the worst country to bring your immigrants from. I, I don't understand. Yeah. I mean, I do understand what's happening. But like... Yeah. If you, it's very interesting to go look at the history of Britain, basically importing the entire village of Mirpur and what happened there because i have other friends that are pakistani that like are like out of all the regions in pakistan you literally cho chose like mirpur itself like that's also distinctly a problem yes. um uh what was i gonna say i mean do they really need more immigrants or less wel welfare state is my thing well they kind of yeah i mean they kind of need more babies but. exactly well i mean and this goes well i'm not going to get into it but if the pre-existing population is devoting so much of their income into a welfare state that then immigrants will disproportionately take advantage of so that they can have more kids than the native population yeah. because they're contributing more it makes it more difficult to have children it's a mess it is a total mess because yeah. my understanding is that Mass immigration isn't necessarily bad, but it's bad when you have a welfare state. I could be wrong. I'm no economist. Um, Erkin is just saying great policy idea. So he agrees with you, Armin. Thank you. I have your or endorsement. Hirschfield also gave a super sticker. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Space Elia is saying if kids are forced to learn about physics, it was the worst time of my life. <laughs> <laughs> for people that are not familiar i have a personal beef with physics <laughs> they should be forced to learn about secularism too of course you have to you have to learn about your civic values gj is saying armin when are you going to move to the u.s why would he move to the u.s never never yeah yeah uh well, I, if i if i if i ever I'm able to just move wherever I want and have enough income to just be able to choose the country that I could just live in. I would probably just move to Japan. Really interesting. Yeah. Uh, Puli again making a super chat in broken Urdu, <laughs> I believe. <laughs> Sir, please no sex, just donkey sex. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Or Hirschfield, thank you for the super chat saying a lot of US libertarians are wrong about Israel and Ukraine. Yeah, a lot of 
libertarians True. are basically non-interventionists because of the monopoly on state mm -hmm. power and then their issues with the state itself and i'm like okay so you're just going to abandon all of your allies then essentially you're just you're just yes. saying that you're going to abandon all your allies against who, well, who are actually doing the hard work of fighting the fight against tyranny which you say that you're against but then you're not going to support mm -hmm. people that actually share your values of fighting against tyranny so yeah no right. thank you well, as as a libertarian myself, I do disagree with those libertarians, and I believe that for you to even be able to endorse capitalism, you need a powerful military presence global, globally to be able to ensure enough uh, stability um, and safety for all countries to be able to have a platform where they could trade and prosper, right? And for that, you need a global presence. Uh, where you basically show your deterrent capabilities against uh, countries that violate these international norms, and you need to be able to, to to demonstrate that you always have to make sure that you back your allies. So you cannot, as a libertarian, you cannot even you don't you have to understand that to be able to have free markets, it, ha it needs to be built upon a framework of stability that that is backed by a powerful military pr presence globally. So and not all libertarians are like this like javier millet yes you know our right. flaming our flaming libertarian king is a hardcore supporter <laughs> of you of ukraine and israel right exactly yo i i'm a i've, I've turned into like a little bit of a millet fangirl i'm not gonna lie yeah um, be careful with that because argentine argentine's economy is so um broken that maybe maybe not even he we don't know what's going to happen like maybe he can't even fix it so if it if it if it doesn't work out people are going to be like oh what happened I, I thought you were such a fan but yeah that's that country's economy is mightily beyond saving so i don't know i mean from what i've seen unpacking what he's done so far i mean we do know that there is going to be pain before there is change and growth but i've seen right very very positive and hopeful things about how he's liberalizing the economy like it's going to suck for yeah, the short term but yes but just don't predict things like that it did you know we have the economies of the world is divided into four okay we have uh, developed countries we have underdeveloped countries and then we have argentine and japan <laughs> right so they are their own categories that's how different they are so so you cannot predict anything about their future. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm I'm just hopeful, you know. I'm hopeful. Mm -hmm. Um, GJ gave a super chat saying, uh, wow, I didn't think I'd live to see the day you guys would ever warm up to Tommy Robinson. Progress. Well, Armin I I I, I was just, like, I was in his years. rally. I was like years ago, I was inside his rally. Wait, what? I didn't know this. <laughs> Yeah, I have videos of that. I could show you. I, I should. Where post was that. this? In the UK? Yeah. Yeah, in the UK. Yeah. Oh, wow. Where, where else? Would, yeah. Where I mean, else would he get this rally? I was so pleasantly surprised when I was in his rally that so many people in the rally of Tommy Robinson were holding Israeli flag. And there was no, not, not, and it was at a time that there was no major news about Israel. They just had Israeli flags, which is so. Interesting because they try to say that his support, like they're far right. Yeah, far right doesn't hold Israeli flags, right? No, they actually people use that against far... him. Right. Yes, the people who are far right actually hates Tommy uh, because they're such Zionists. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah, when he's like literally at the front of an anti-Semitism rally <laughs> in the streets. Of yeah, London. exactly. Exactly. Um. G excuse me, Ice Ray saying uh, GDR prisoners were freed by Germany in the 80s. Okay. And DW, uh, he also gave another super chat saying uh, DW went pessimist because Apostate Prophet said the UK is doomed. You know, no. don't, I, yeah, I don't, I'm, I think I'm, we I'm should be, the, the, don't defeat him. Yes, but, but the UK is potentially doomed, and we have to fight for the UK. Yeah. Okay. Nothing is. Nothing is. Don't consider. Don't consider UK. UK 
it has still has a lot of fight in it okay and go don't give up on the country don't give up on yeah. your country fight for your country i just don't think it's gonna come from the elites um and holger is saying also the iranian lion flag was visible yes in the footage that i That's have amazing. seen so far the shiro really? Rashid was flying high a lot of them actually right actually we should um i saw japanese flags in the footage we i've seen online we should tell tell people what the actual iranian flag is right so um here the educate because this is what people need to learn okay so this yeah. is the the left one is the islamic republic flag it's not the iranian flag that's the flag of the islamic republic okay the right one with the lion and the sword and the sun oh, that's the, armin no, as that's, a monarchist exposed yeah. this is the super no, popular the, one no that's not the right flag i i'm showing you the wrong flag here <laughs> the actual yeah, official if, one if there's a have... little if there's a little crown on the lion it's a monarchist thing <laughs> yeah so Boop, yeah this is the Freudian actual... flip <laughs> <laughs> no so this is the actual one the one with that the crown it's just the lion the sun yeah. the one with the crown is not the official sign of the country like that's the one with the crown is the official sign of the uh, the military i think the artesh uh, of the pahlavi dynasty so the actual one that's supposed to be in the middle of the flag just has the lion the sword and the sun so mm -hmm. the the one that right now people are associated with the iranian flag the, in the middle of it it has a symbol that represents allah and yeah that's not the actual flag so let me bring this up so this one this is the islamic republic's flag okay so this one has allah in the middle and it has allah akbar all the way up here and allah akbar all the way here and when you see iranians in you know, outside of Iran, when they were waving the flag, that's not the flag that they wave. This is the flag that they wave. You know, mm -hmm. with this in the middle, the lion and the Oh, and Dia is saying that Nayak Gorbani, the badass Iranian dissident that we have talked about a lot on this channel recently, was there and he spoke on stage. Oh, fantastic. That's so cool. Wait, who? Uh, GJ. The oh, yeah, remember we, okay. we talk about the guy that yes, just goes yes. and holds a sign saying Hamas is terrorist and then people assault him. Right, right. For yes, just like stating that. a fact yeah, that, that is uh, believed to be true by the UK government of, you know, the government of the country he's living in. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> GJ is giving a super chat. And GJ, I'm going to be honest, I don't agree with the super chat and I don't appreciate it. So I do have to call it out saying the UK must stop calling Pakis Asians. Okay, don't. Paki is a slur. Second of all, oh, Pakistanis okay. are Asians. They are Asians. Yeah, but but I, I don't agree with the Pocky reference, okay? But I do agree that you shouldn't call them Asians because you're trying to hide. Because when they do that, they're trying to hide the certain uh, information, right? So they call, don't refer to them as Pockies, refer to them as Pakistanis. Pakistanis, and yeah, I agree that they should be referred to as Pakistanis, not Asians. But don't use the, that, that's a slur. So I don't think that's a good thing. Don't yeah. say Pocky. Yeah. Um. And a uh, Gaijin American gave a super chat saying he bent the knee to Queen Elizabeth and her heirs and Pahlavi. Are we really shocked? Wait, who's he? Oh, you mean Armin? <laughs> <laughs> Freedom! Eagle. <laughs> well, I want to be able to imitate an eagle screech. Because you can't be an American and not punctuate things with an eagle screech. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so he's joking, saying that when you became a Canadian citizen, you you bent the knee to Queen Elizabeth. You promised oh, yourself to the Queen, saying. Norman. You yeah, promised not fealty gonna, to the Queen. Well, she's dead now, so I don't have to worry about that. Okay. No, you have so a king now. Funny. You have a new daddy. <laughs> no, I never, I never took an oath to be loyal to him. I just took an oath to be loyal to the Queen. So, and she, uh, I never, I never mentioned anything about a king. And now she's dead, so I am free of my oath. 
<laughs> oh, excuse I me. I didn't realize that your fealty to the, to the crown was time sensitive. <laughs> Yeah, because it, it, in the oath, I literally asks you to um, to say to the queen. I said queen. I never mentioned king. So yeah, it's it's done. It's over. Sorry, you should have made <laughs> it more. Canada. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh my god. <laughs> um. Let me see. Richard gave a super chat saying, "I had to watch a painful interview this morning." People quitting the Biden administration over supporting Israel. Thank you for your sanity. Yeah, a lot of the people in the administration have left um, because of him. Wow. I don't know what they thought was going to happen. Do you know who makes the most amazing, gorgeous, and other adjectives that I can't use here on YouTube? Blasphemous art ever? We do. And for some reason, we are giving it away for free. Download them now using the link in the description before we change our mind.